Hi, thanks for watching this video. My name is Afonsini Anderson. I am a Cisco Technical Solutions Architect with the America's Enterprise Networking Team. Today I'm going to talk about the CLI template compliance. Uh, it's a feature that was introduced in Cisco DNA Center release 2.3.3 and I will do a quick demo. So how does this feature work? First, let's talk about the Cisco DNA Center uh, template editor tool if you are not familiar with it. We support two types of industry standard templating language, uh, Verilocity and Ginger. This allows the customers to take advantage of existing CLI configuration and turn them into usable automated automation templates. And this can be, be leveraged for day zero and a day N uh, deployments. Well, today I'm going to be talking about, about the CLI compliance. We also support the comparison between the startup and running config, a software image, and secure advisory compliance, as you see on my screen. So the CLI template compliance is enforced through network profiles. I'll show you that in the demo. Once you create and provision a template to the device, this becomes your standard for that specific device, the standard configuration. From then on, if changes are made that go against that configuration you specified in the template, based on the next config archive that Cisco DNA Center has for that specific device, it's going to flag the deviation. This would be reflected on a compliance summary page uh, where you would be able to click on network profiles, which is going to uh, highlight the number of uh, uh, deviations you have or flags, and you'll be able to see what changes and the differences. So let's quickly look at a demo. This is my Cisco DNA Center release 2.3.3. I'll show you right here, 2.3.3.4. There are a few steps to make this tool um, work. The first one is obviously the template that we talked about. So I have a very, very basic template that I created for the sake of this demo. It's a template that creates a VLAN and applies uh, the, that creates an interface and, and applies that VLAN into it. Um, so that's one of the second step, it would be network profiles, which I talked about. Uh, we have this one uh, profile that it's created. It's a switching type. You can do wireless and others. I have it applied on six sites because you can do other things. And I'm going to go ahead under day N, add my specific template, uh, the September one, by the way, you can search so that it comes up quickly and I'm going to add it, and I'm going to save the configure these changes. So the third thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that specific site, and uh, the specific switch that I'm working with is a CAT9200. I'm going to provision that template to standardize. Um, that was not the setting I wanted. It is the provision device that I wanted. So I'm going to click next, and it's going to pull up that specific device. So I'm going to uh, just to select a different interface, and uh, I'm going to create a random VLAN, and uh, I'm going uh, VLAN 532. I'm just going to call it that name. You can call it anything, Charlie 535. And I'm going to click next. Uh, DNA Center is when you push a template, it shows everything that you're going to deploy. And I'm going to hit deploy. You can do it later, but I wanted to do it now. So, and uh, you can click on this task, which you can also get to from the main menu by going to uh, here and uh, go to um, activities and be able to go here where you see what's happening with DNA Center. So. I am doing this specific task 
if you click on here, it's going to show you everything that is being pushed here uh, until uh, you're able to see that it failed or it succeeded. So if it's a successful, we would be able to see it here. So once it's done, and as you can see, it's a success. Once it's done, now we are going to head back, go to provision and go to inventory. And we are going to pull up our div specific device that the 9200 that I just provisioned. And uh, I'm going to pull it up and uh, look at the, the summary, summary, the compliance page. Again, what's going to show us is that uh, we are compliant, we push that template and it's ready to go. Right, so now let's refresh this and we're going to run the compliance check, uh, which takes a few seconds. We're going to run it twice. And as you can see, that template we just applied, it's going to, um, it, it's, compliant we applied it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, to um, go log into my switch so I'm going to trigger the violation uh, show VLAN proof so I'm going to delete can't even spell but uh, let's see any, um, I'm going to remove that VLAN 535. And uh, so that's, again, remember the template had this VLAN 535 that I created and it was applied to interface uh, one, uh, zero, it's one slash zero slash nine uh, gig interface. So, I'm going to delete this, which should be able to trigger the violation because that is a violation uh, to the template that we applied. So we're going to, um, after these changes are made, you have to give it some time. And uh, so when we come back here, we should be able to see this is no longer gonna be zero, zero. it should be, uh, should be one. So <clears throat> now let's refresh and uh, go back to the summary. We've um, I've made a change to the switch that should trigger uh, this network profile to flag one change at least I made. So again, when you click this run a compliance check, it takes a few seconds. And uh, now, as you can see here, it does go from zero to one because now I made a change against my template. And if you remember, I removed uh, this VLAN from uh, my switch uh, against this template and it was a flag. So I hope this was a good use of your time. Thanks again for watching this video.